It's crazy to think that between all the new Bluetooth devices and excellent music players leaving the Fire factory, that this company still finds the time and resources to also produce some of the most impressive in-ear monitors too. Fire have not really been involved in earphone production for more than just a few short years, but within that time they have managed to position themselves to be well and truly on the way to being the benchmark for all others to follow in terms of the bang for buck value which can be found in their products. The latest addition to Fire's IAM lineup is this, the FH7, which builds on the success of the FH5 but aims to further refine the sound character. Fire really did a great job with the build of the FH5 and they've largely carried that design over to the FH7. One notable difference is the wave-like pattern on the faceplate, but a more prominent change is the color scheme. Whereas the FH5 featured a soft touch darkish silver gray and 10 karat gold colored accents, the FH7 features the same soft touch finish, but with a black and rose gold accented color scheme. This actually reminded me immediately of the Rolex Yachtmaster, which has a very iconic and luxurious look. The FH7 is also slightly bigger than the FH5, no doubt to make room for the larger beryllium coated dynamic driver and the extra balanced armature. The MMCX connector is also slightly different as the one on the FH5 was almost flush with the housing, whereas the connector on the FH7 is considerably more raised. I don't have the FH5 on hand to compare the two, but from what I remember, the FH7 feels just as comfortable to me as the FH5 did. Fio clearly did spend a lot of time and resources on getting the overall shape just right, and I really am amazed at just how comfortable they are able to make a universal fit design. Add in the truly exceptional build quality, and what Fio has here is a very well designed product, even down to the supplied cable, as this is quite possibly the nicest cable I've ever seen from Fio. Starting from the headphone connector, we can see that this silver cable actually has a real weaved design. I've often noticed people describing other cables as being braided, but when you look closely, it's often just a twisted pair of twisted cables, which can give the illusion of having been braided. But in the case of this cable, the eight individual wires are braided, rather than just twisted together. The same can be said for the portion of the cable between the MMCX connector and the splitter, as the four cables for each channel are also braided together. Then there's one particular trick the FH7 has up its sleeve, which you will never notice unless you remove the ear tips. And it's arguably the biggest feature of the FH7. What we're talking about here are swappable filters. For the first time ever, Fio has designed a pair of IEMs which allow you to somewhat customize the sound more to your own preference. How it actually works is that these filters attenuate the balanced armature located within the nozzle and thus affecting its frequency response. So really, it's the response of this BA in relation to the other drivers which is affected rather than all drivers at the same time. There are three pairs of filters, namely black, green and red which have also been named as Reference, Treble Boost and Bass Boost respectively. The treble filter actually has no dampener in at all, and so the balance armature in the nozzle is left completely unattenuated. But we'll get more into the nitty gritty of how these filters affect the overall sound when we discuss the sound character itself. Overall, I think Fire once again did a great job with the design of the FH7. I really do consider the FH7 to have practically the perfect design. I also like the fact that the shell is metal rather than plastic. That added heft just gives you this perception of it being a more substantial product. Of course, weight has nothing to do with quality, unless we're talking about precious metals perhaps, but it just gives you the sense of it being a more premium product. As for the sound, I'm just going to come right out and say it. The FH7 is, in my opinion at least, the best in-ears Fire has ever made. Are these perfect? Well, no, but they do seem closer to perfection than any other IEM Fire has produced. This is especially true if we compare the frequency response of the FH7 to some of Fire's other IEMs. 
But first, let's take a look at how those filters alter the sound signature. As mentioned, all these filters really do is to affect the treble region with respect to the rest of the signature. The green filter shows the treble frequencies to go unchecked, whereas both the black and red filters dampen the balanced armature in the nozzle. Personally, I found the red filter to sound best, despite the fact that the black filter is labeled as being the reference filter. This is where the overall signature did let me down a bit because I was really hoping that the bass boost, the red filter, actually would increase the bass response. Also, even with the red filter, there are certain treble peaks that just sounded a bit too prominent for my tastes, and the bass is just a bit too polite. On tracks such as Doing It Right by Daft Punk, where I know there is a healthy amount of sub bass, I want to be able to feel those bass notes, but sadly the FH7 just doesn't quite get there. I'm not entirely sure if it's maybe the elevated region between around 1 to 2 kHz that maybe dictates how loud you can listen to the FH7, which then in turn stops you from turning up the volume for those bass notes, but whatever the case is, the FH7 just doesn't quite hit the mark for me in the sub bass. Regardless, I still think the FH7 has a good signature. Something you can do to improve the sound would of course be to use an amplifier which has an analog bass boost. But there's something else which can be done if you too find the treble frequencies just a bit too prominent. If we have a look at how the signature is affected by the output impedance of the amplifier, we can see that an increase in output impedance will also decrease the upper treble region. Unfortunately, the bass region will also be affected, but not quite by the same degree as those treble peaks. Comparing the response of the FH7 to that of the FH5 shows that whilst both models have somewhat of a similar trend in the treble region, the more obvious difference can be found in the bass and mids. I didn't particularly like the sound of the FH5 because I felt that it just had this strange kind of dark signature to it. I'm not exactly sure what is responsible for this, as it might be the bass response or maybe that scoop between 2 and 5 kHz, but the FH7 doesn't seem to have any of that darkness. As I said, I think the FH7 could benefit from more bass, but the FH5 would be a good example of perhaps how too much bass would be a negative thing. Then we should take a look at the response of the FA7. Again, I felt that fire went too far with the bass and this shows in the frequency response. Interestingly, the FA7 also didn't sound dark to me, like the FH5 did. In fact, I actually really enjoyed the mids and the treble of the FA7. So this leads me to think that perhaps whatever is responsible for that particular trait doesn't lie in the bass region. Unfortunately, I can't compare them directly, but if I think back, I think I still enjoyed the mids and treble on the FA7 more than those on the FH7. But as an overall signature, I definitely prefer the FH7. One other set of IEMs which I still use to this day as somewhat of a reference is the Dunu DK3001. Whilst it has a sound signature which I wouldn't call quite perfect either, it is indeed very very good nonetheless, but more important is that it has one of, if not the most coherent sound that I've ever heard from a hybrid driver setup. Practically the only real flaw with the DK3001 for me is the comfort, which means that I can't stand to use them for more than about 30 minutes at most. But we're only considering the sound here, so naturally I ended up comparing the FH7 to the Dunu. If we compare the response of the FH7 with the red filter to the response of the 3001, we can definitely spot some differences. The graphs have been centered around 1 kHz as this is the point I use to volume match when I make comparisons. Overall, the Dunu seems to have a smoother and more balanced response. The increased bass response is certainly noticeable, but the whole signature remains coherent. There is no bloat and that sub bass really only kicks in when it's needed. The Dunu also lacks that deep scoop in the 1.5 to about 4 kHz point relative to 1 kHz. I'm not entirely certain of just how much of an effect this particular frequency range has on the overall signature, but if I listen to both sets of IEMs, I can't help but feel that a smoother and more balanced response in this region seems to make for an audibly smoother and more coherent sound character. But as I mentioned, whilst the FH7 might not quite have as good of a sound as the Denu has, 
the lack of comfort in the 3001 would have me pick the FH7 without hesitation every single time. So overall, the sound of the FH7 is, as I said, not perfect, but I think it's still a product which Fio can be immensely proud of. Truth be told, I've heard some considerably more expensive IEMs which really did not sound as good as the FH7 does. I think, to be totally fair, the signature of the FH7 is going to depend more on what your ears have already become used to. Some will find the FH7 good, others will think they are amazing, but I think very few people will not like them at all. The biggest issue I have with the FH7 is the price, seeing as they will set you back roughly $450. These are the most expensive IEMs that FIO have ever produced, and $450 really is quite a lot to be spending on IEMs, especially when you consider that the FA7 is around $150 more affordable than the FH7. But ironically, my biggest issue with these IEMs is also what I would consider to be their biggest strength. Again, $450 is a buttload for IEMs, but go and have a look at competing products and see what you find. For this type of sound tuning, for this level of excellent build quality and comfort, the FH7 truly is a complete package. It's a premium product, and it's the type of product that would cost you considerably more than $450 if these were produced by the likes of perhaps Shure or Western or any number of more exotic and niche IEM companies. I do wish that the filter system employed here offered more drastic changes to the signature though, and I think overall it just doesn't seem like it was really worth all the effort of designing such an IEM if we consider the usefulness in this case. Perhaps if Fire had designed the FH7 with just the base filter, and meaning that it's non-changeable, and slashed the price by $50 or maybe even $100, then that would have made the FH7 just a way better value product. But who knows, maybe Fio will produce some other filters for the FH7 that alter the sound more drastically and then sell them separately as an optional extra. But whatever, there isn't much point in discussing what should have or could have been or what might happen in the future. The fact is, what the FH7 is right now really is a very good product. Whilst the sound signature doesn't feel quite as balanced and coherent as I would like, for the price, it truly is a compelling value proposition compared to what is on offer from other audio companies. So if you're on the hunt for a new set of IEMs, I strongly recommend that you find a store near you that will allow you to demo them and see if they suit your tastes. Well, that brings us to the end. Thanks for watching. Any questions and comments, please do leave them down below. That's all from me for now, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.